Hello and welcome to Community Conversations, the See You Around community podcast all about you, your neighbourhoods and the people living in them. Each week we meet a lovely community member living locally and learn all about them, their passions and what attracted them to their neighbourhood. This week, Eve Jaso joins us. Better known as Eve Presenter, Eve has been the voice of our mornings and our drives home for almost nine years on 104.8 Channel 4. We find out with Eve what brought her to Dubai, living on the palm, and how she became the UAE's craziest cat lady. This is Community Conversations. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me. I can't me. remember the last time I saw you. <gasps> when you had a baby. Yeah. Mm. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was in a hospital. Really? Yes, but you look fabulous she now. She turned two you. on Friday. I know. Oh my God. That's a long I... time ago. I know. Who are you? <laughs> Tell me about yourself. Come on, I know everything. But... I know. Okay, well, I'm Eve. Hi. Um, I'm that voice that you hear in the afternoon. I'm Drive Time, uh, Channel 4 Radio, 104.8. And uh, I look after you while you're going home, try and keep you happy, be myself, be a bit of fun, play some games, give away some nice prizes, play you the tunes. I'm that radio girl. Yeah, you are. And how long have you been in Dubai? Uh, I got here in 2012, 2012. I'm... I don't know how, I'm not going to add that up, but it was a long time. But it's it's a good time. It's the best time, I feel like. It's almost nine years. <laughs> there's, there's, Isn't there's that a, crazy? You know, it's 2021 <gasps> now, 2022, <sighs> 2012, <sighs> almost 10 years. Coming up to 10 years. Yeah. That's cute. It's very exciting, mm. though. And do you think you'd ever go back to the UK? No. Do you not think so? No, no. This is home. I don't even know what that is anymore. Like I'm like, this is home. Uh, Dubai is the best city and yeah you're gonna have to kick me out to get me out of here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. um we know that you live on the palm jumeirah yes what drew you to wanting to live on the palm jumeirah or tell us about when you first moved here where you were and your journey to getting to the palm jumeirah well uh the palm jumeirah is one of those places that is the dream And uh, I was living in a villa with some friends Mm -hmm. at the time and a partner. And then I broke up and ended up being homeless. So, yeah, hard times. Yeah. True story. Um, But, you know, when you're going through the worst of the worst and then my mum was like, why don't you just live in the best of the best? And I was like, I can't afford the best of the best. She's like, yeah, go live your dream. So I did. I looked at the palm and I was like, oh, my gosh, I can actually afford to live on the palm. So when I lived in the best and the best, and next thing you know, I'm from Barsha to Palm Jumeirah. Love it. <laughs> it's amazing. So nice. And then, like, as we know, Channel 4 Dubai is in Ashman. Did you ever experience living in Ashman? I never lived Did in Ashman. Not? No, no. When I started working at Channel 4, this is how even I know one another. We worked <laughs> at Channel 4 together. Hi. Radio wifey. <laughs> exactly. And um, I ended up moving from Dubai to Ashman. Did you? Yeah. You lived in Ajman for a bit. Yeah, I did. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, I lived in I lived in the staff accommodation. Wow. And it was nice, but then you end up coming back to Dubai and you're like, wow, there's so much to do and there's yeah. so much I mean, food deliveries is a big one. <laughs> so many food deliveries in That's Dubai. the key thing. If there's food, we're here. <laughs> when, you, when you compare it to Ajman. But yeah, no, it was really um, the, the difference between the two. And then the reason why we I ended up going back to Dubai was yeah. because the rent prices started dropping. And it was so you affordable. End, yeah, and it's affordable. Mm. And um, like my husband and I, we started looking at the Palm Jumeirah recently because again, it is affordable. It is. And it is lovely. I've got a oh. few friends that live there. And Come. You, you look at, <laughs> I, Eve has just moved from, okay, so where were you living before? I was on the Palm, but on the side of the sunshine side in the morning. Okay, so shoreline side. Shoreline side, yes. Okay. But I moved over to the other side of the shoreline side. Okay. The sunset side. So golden mile side. Yeah. Yeah. But the other, but what by the water. Yeah. And it's just, it's just beautiful. You just, once you're there it's really hard to leave how was it moving from one side of the well it's like the trunk isn't it yes yeah how is it moving from one side side. to the other side it's beautiful it's easy and now I feel like I know it completely yeah um I've always been in the sunshine and that's when the sun rises on that side of the, the palm and that side of the front and the crescents and stuff but now I moved over yeah and I'm just enjoying the sunset it's just one of those areas that now I can go out and not melt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can enjoy the sunset and have dinner outside while the sun is coming down. And oh, that's it's just, so nice. it's just easy. And it's just easier. I think yeah. it's nicer. That's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. I do really, really like 
watching your Instagram stories. Thank you. And like you've got this beautiful like terrace and stuff like that. And then seeing water as well. I live in the middle of the <laughs> desert. So I don't ever see some water. <gasps> okay, let me you just know, the tell you. The closest water I have is the um, Hamdan Bin Sports Complex. You know the big swimming pool? No, you, you need to <laughs> come to the park. I'll tell you why, right? So first of all, you get to the palm and you think, oh, okay, I'm going to live on something that's unusual. So when you mm. go home and you tell people, you're like, I live on an actual palm tree of yeah. land. One. Two, there's a beach mm-hmm. on both sides. And three, there's greenery. So in the middle, there's the Golden Mile, which all has grass. And then four, you have a marina. Yeah. So I feel like you have everything there. If you want a tall building, you can live on one of the tallest buildings right now. Yeah. Palm have views. you start? Have you gone up there yet? Have you gone no, up to the view? No, I need I, to. Yeah, I I'd need like, to. really like to do that. Yeah. And then if you want, you can have a villa. Yeah. And then if you want a flat, you can have a flat. So I'm like, I think it's just got everything. It's like everything Dubai is on the palm. It's such a huge community as well. Mm. I kind of forget. I was saying this um, to a couple of people that have moved on to the palm before. And it's like the way that my thoughts of the Palm Jumeirah was, yeah. oh, it's got Aquaventure on it. And that was kind of it. And then Nikhil Mall opened. And then I was like, oh, it's got Nikhil yeah. Mall on it. And then it, it's there's just so much there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that I didn't actually know of yes. until I had people that lived there and I was visiting yeah. them frequently. And it's like, the Nikhil Mall's amazing. Like having that access. Thank you. And then do you, is, Thank does you. your building go from underground as well? So like, yes. see, this is what I mean. Like yes. I didn't know that there were all these <laughs> underground tunnels. It's <laughs> so cool. But I've even found, because going underground is a little bit like weaving in and out yeah. uh, to get to Nikhil Mall. But what I found is that there is overpasses and mm-hmm. I found a way that you can like get across the road oh. safely, um, but still get to the mall and it's faster. Amazing. Yeah, but you got to come because if you come, then you can visit, then we can show you around. And people don't really, realize it until you come like my brother is the same yeah um he didn't realize he was like oh it's just it's very expensive and you can never live there and it's villas and I'm like hang on a sec yeah come and have a look like and he's the same he's just had a baby and he wants to move to the palm now as well so my like thought process on the palm again Mm. was like the whole situation is it costs so much to get on and off yes. of it on a ta- it, like if you're getting a taxi anywhere mm. it's actually not the case no. because it's so central to everything yes yeah um but yeah enough about the palm tell us about yourself. <laughs> so like tell us um your journey in dubai mm. so where did you what what made you move here what were you doing before how did you get the job all of that sort of stuff um, i genuinely don't know this do so i'm not? really interested to know this story no way. Yeah. okay um how do i start so i was working in a nightclub in okay. central london and i wanted to be a dancer oh. so i went to a dance competition in a nightclub and was trying to be a dance competitor it didn't work. I didn't get through. I've not never, very good at ever, ever seen Eve dance. <laughs> like, I couldn't tell you if she's good or bad. But maybe she thought she was good at some I, point. I don't know. Maybe I was. Um, and then um, the guy of the competition who was hosting it mm-hmm. at the time was Tim Westwood. Oh, okay. Yeah. A very famous DJ in England and uh, presenter who does his own TV show, Pimp My Ride. And he was not allowed in the venue. Apparently, he was banned. So the night that it was the finals, they're like, oh, we've got Tim Westwood coming. He couldn't come. Uh, they were like, we need a host. And I was like, hey, I've been here every single week. You won't let me do the dance competition. At least let me run on the stage. And they're like, okay, fine. Here you go. Here's a microphone. Go. Oh, my God. Next thing you know, I'm on the stage. I'm hosting a whole competition. And somebody from the Ministry of Sound Radio was in the crowd. And he was watching. And he grabbed me afterwards and said, you have an amazing voice. You have such a fun personality. You're just a natural. Please take my card and please call me. And I was like, yeah this is a chat up line put it in the mm. back of my bag woke up the next day googled him and it was like oh he's actually someone in ministry of sound that's amazing so next thing you know i'm in a studio and i'm working with dj skins who's asking me you need to host i'm gonna dj and i'm like i've never done this before and yeah next thing you know i'm doing a radio course um with somebody from capital fm chris brooks hey who trained me up (laughs) hi uh, basically trained me up gave Mm -hmm. me a demo which was amazing I worked with guys like Bruno Brooks who was a BBC radio legend um, who also gave me a second demo on something else it's a long Mm. story but anyway long story short then my brother moved to Dubai and was like I was going for Kiss 100 in London yeah I got down to the chosen one top 50 um, and then told that I wasn't the right race Oh, interesting. To be on Kiss okay. because I'm half Arabic. Okay. So I sort of got rejected for being Arabic, mm. sadly, um, and then went to other radio stations. Nothing happened. And my brother's like, listen, come to Dubai. You are half Arabic. There are no Arabic chicks on the radio in English speaking mm. at the time. 
So I took a holiday and I just never left. I literally went to all the radio stations, okay. applied to them all. And they all came back. Each one gave me a job, but the best package was Channel 4 because it was full-time. Oh, wow. So I was like, I can actually come out so here So did live. you actually come here and never leave? Yeah. I came for a holiday and just didn't go back. That's amazing. <laughs> I ended up having to go back when I got a job and yeah. then get all my stuff and bring it out here and ship it over. But yeah, I just, I couldn't believe it. I just didn't understand, like, boom, instantly. Everyone was like, okay, yeah, here's a job. Wow, that's mm, amazing. Thank you. And now how long have you been at Channel 4 for? Nine years? No, I took a break. Yeah. Went to Dubai 92. Yeah. Did that for six months and then went back to Channel 4. Got yeah. off a drive time and I'm still there. Amazing. Yeah. So the way even I know one another is I started as a station producer at Channel 4 and um, my now husband was her co-presenter. Yeah, breakfast. And that's kind of how we that was the dynamic yes and you were the break you ended up being our producer as well at the same yeah, time I was producing as well and we were doing social media stuff. yeah I would like it was a great <laughs> excuse to kind of be like well I'm there at 5 a.m so I get to leave at one okay bye yeah <laughs> like, and just really early we were a fun team it was like in the family it was like hey. it is really interesting because you kind of from the outside now you look into what channel four has become mm. and I'm like these people didn't even know what Ashman was like there's a mall right next door to the studio now <laughs> easy it's not a problem Problem. We couldn't. We would. We would have. Do you remember? We would have like cheese, cheese bread. bread. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> like that was just. It was just it was so the best. Like, I mean, what do you think the future holds for Eve Presenter, Eve Jaso? Oh God! Did you say my real name? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does that. Only at school. Um, <laughs> I just. I really love being here, and now I found a time slot that works perfect with my life. My yeah. partner is also a drive time host. Mm-hmm. And it just fits in with our world so nicely. Like, you know, we're both at home together. We have breakfast together. And then, you know, he goes off and does his show and then comes back and waits for me. And then I come back and do my show. And we're just happy doing the dream job. Yeah. You know, and I've really connected with this position. And I just realized that being on air for a certain amount of time, Mm -hmm. people get to know you. They fall in love with the character of who you are. And then you just fit in with that community and that time slot and, I just want to stay there. I don't yeah. want to move. I just love it. It's like it's home now and I can't imagine life any other way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't think I'm going anywhere. I'm staying. Good. Yeah, next I'll get a dog and then you know we can have You're dog playmates. Get a dog. <laughs> he doesn't it's, know it, but yes. Oh, you dropped it in. <laughs> How did you meet Buddy? <laughs> because if you see on Eve's Instagram, oh. Buddy is literally the light of her life. He is my love. Buddy is her child. Crazy cat lady. Uh, exactly. We're, go- we're going on yeah. to the crazy cat lady. Yeah, yeah. Um, so where did that come? Where? How did Buddy come into your life? Where did Buddy come from? When I first moved to Dubai, mm-hmm. I had no friends. I knew, oh. no, I knew no one. <laughs> <laughs> I had no story. friends. <laughs> I had no friends. I knew no one. My brother was living really far away and he was always DJing. So I had no life. Mm-hmm. And just started here. Just started on the radio. And I was walking through Satwa because I used to live in Jamira 1. I used to go get food in Satwa because it's affordable, love Satwa. Mm-hmm. And there used to be this pet shop. And I'd walk past and go, oh, I really want, I really want an animal. But then one day there was these two kittens, an orange one and a white one. One was a girl, one was a boy. And it was just floating around the pet shop. And I went in and I said, there's these two cats outside. They're yours. And they were like, no, they're street cats. And I was like, oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this one's mine. <laughs> this one's mine. And I picked the boy because I wanted a little boy to be my friend. And I called him Buddy because he's genuinely my first buddy here in Dubai. And Aww, that's a real story. That's actually so sweet. It's real. And that's why I, that's how he got his name. Oh, that's he's so nice. That's a friend. <laughs> my first ever <laughs> my first friend, in, friend Dubai. in Dubai. Buddy. Um, in terms <laughs> of, so the cat thing is eve is definitely Mm. a crazy cat lady we um see that a lot on your instagram stories um from from to the point okay so this is i think it's out of hand now really (laughs) what bella when when we were both working at channel (laughs) four there were some strays that we would feed yes in the car park now gets out of her car Mm. and she's like the pied piper (laughs) (laughs) these cats just come from Every yeah, yeah, yeah. And how they many know. do you have now? How many are you feeding? Okay, there's Cookie, there's Mama. So many. Honestly, there's about five to eight. Okay. By name. And they all know their names. 
That's good. Yeah, Are they home. all? Have they? Have you done all of the catch and releases on them and stuff like Trying. that? Trying. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so hard because they're stray, 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 yeah. wild stray. So it's very hard to catch it. And at the time, I had a friend, Vicky News, who would yeah. help me. So we come together. But right now, I'm on my own. Everyone at Channel Four is scared of cats. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't do this on my own. So I try, and if I can, I take them and I always go up to Russell Kama because that's for me is the closest place. And the yeah. Russell Kama Welfare Animal Welfare are just beautiful people that will look after the situation. Mm-hmm. And help. So that's the mission. Yeah. The mission is on. Eve has always had like a box of cat food or biscuits, bowls and in the water in her car for cats mm-hmm. that she finds. There was a story that I want Eve to tell me oh, about Rocky. Who, really? Yeah. Oh. How you found Rocky? It's oh my insane. God. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, working on a breakfast show in the morning mm-hmm. uh, with DJ Bless, Marwan and James and yourself. And um, they went, the boys went home and I was still there, I think. And Marwan was driving down Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road, Mm -hmm. said, hey, listen, there's this little cat and it's walking the wrong way into Sharjah and it should be going to Dubai. Do you want to come up and get it? And I was like, okay, just send me a pin of where you are. Next thing you know, I'm in the car driving to Sharjah, (laughs) looking for this little kitten on the side of the road in the fast lane, by the way. Yeah, in the central reservation of... (sighs) Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed right? Yeah, so it's literally walking the wrong way mm-hmm. in the middle on the fast lane and I see it. I don't know how I saw it. I was meant to see him. And I pulled up and I pulled my car up, put the lights on, jumped out the car. All the cars behind me are screeching and beeping and yelling and I grab him, put him in my car and take him home. And I called yeah. him Rocky because when I took him to the vents, he was all burnt because it was in the heat of the summer oh under God. his belly and his paws. So he could only sit up. Yeah. So we called him Rocky because he looked like he was boxing and I found him on the rocks in Sharjah on the hot concrete. So that's how he became Rocky. Oh, so sweet. Rocky would also um, like punch uh, toys. Like, you know, the toys that yeah. you would like ha- dangle toys yeah. and he yeah. would like punch them, oh. which was very sweet. But um, yeah, Eve goes above and beyond for cats that she finds in this country. Yes. Um, one cat in particular. I would like you to tell the story oh, of Princess. Was that her name? Angel. Angel. (laughs) So Angel was during literally the height of (gasps) lockdown. So tell us that story. So during the pandemic, do you remember when we had to go get police permits Mm -hmm. to go outside? There was this stray cat living at my community in the area at the time. And he would be, uh, she would be fed every day by everyone. And then one day she just went missing. And that day I put her on Instagram and everyone was like, okay, I'll, I'll give her a home. So we found a home for her. And I came home one day, gone find out that the pest control had come and taken her. Yeah. So on front C, they just released them there to have oh, a wow. happy life on the beach. Whether they're going to survive or not is up to the cat. Wow. So I'm getting a permit every single day uh, looking yeah. for her, looking for her. And every day, and it was raining during that time, so yeah. I would go out in the middle of the rain. And uh, yeah, one day, didn't find her, but then I asked a charity to get involved and help, and they did. They found her Amazing. somehow during the pandemic, um, she came and lived with me in Fat Cat Buddy. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, uh, a friend of mine, um, Ali, wanted her so badly. I was like, please give me her. I was like, yeah, you can have her. And yeah. he's now now Cat Daddy. I love that. It's so nice. The way you kind of go out of your way all the time for these animals yeah. is incredible. And I do really, really admire that about you. Oh, it's very, I need, very... I need a charity. I'm just, I'm not, just not too sure on the rules and the regulations. So I just do my little bit in the car park safely where exactly. I can monitor yeah. it. Yeah. Right. So um, at the end of every podcast, I do a quick fire round. Nice. So um, you as a resident on the palm, I want you to tell me your favorite places. So one, your favorite place to go for coffee. Cafe Batil. For sure, Mm -hmm. Kilmore, because it has a beautiful terrace outside. Where is your favourite place to go for a massage on the palm? I really enjoy Tilly Spa. Okay. Inside Jamira's Bill Sarai. Very nice. And finally, where is your favourite place to catch some rays, get a tan? Oh, um, I have a few. Okay. If you want a lively place, Mm -hmm. I would say Club Vista Mare, because there's Breeze Beach and it's just busy, but it's gorgeous beach and you have the whole coastline in a view if Mm -hmm. you want an Instagram photo um I also love Oceana Residence Beach Mm -hmm. that's also a stunning one because you have the marina on one side and you can get the whole of JBR in the sunset nice stunning um and the new Palm West Mm -hmm. there's gorgeous there's like all these little 
like shops for mm. food and drink and then the beach right in front of you is like everything ideal yeah, yeah. well thank you so much for coming thank and you. joining me and it's been really really nice catching up catch and up. having a chat i know it's been Aww. so lovely <laughs> and um we'll see you in the next one thanks Thank you so much to Eve for joining me today. You can find her on Instagram at Eve Presenter. If you want to be part of Community Conversations, make sure you email me, bella at seeyouaround.app. For all things community, events and lifestyle, download the See You Around community app now.